what are we on? Four? Yeah, okay. It's Ice Age 4! And brother, does this feel like Ice Age 4? Yeah, it's no secret, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the Ice Age movies. I don't dislike them, but I don't really get into them that much. That's except for the last one. Number three actually had a fair amount of life and energy into it. I actually kind of dug that one. At the very least, you could say, all right, it stops at three. It's a trilogy, and, and you can kind of wrap it up, but nope. Somewhere somebody said these still make money, and then, yeah, I guess they must. They made two more, so we got an obligation movie, and yeah, that's exactly what it feels like, an obligation movie. Manny and Ellie are getting used to life as parents when, out of the blue, Sid's family pops up and gives them their grandma only to immediately disappear because they pretty much want to abandon her the same way they abandoned him. Okay, I will give this movie credit, that is a really good fake out. I really thought they were gonna be main characters, they give them personalities and distinct looks and everything, and they just leave for no other reason than they're awful, and I kind of respect that. However, as the title suggests, a continental drift occurs caused by, well, that muskrat squirrel thingy from earlier, and yeah, once again, he kinda has the best scenes in the movie. And Manny, Diego, and Sid are separated from the rest. Trying to get back home, they discover a group of pirates who destroy anyone in their path but get really pissed off when somehow Manny's group survives. Can they get back home in time while the daughter learns about friendship and Diego befriends a lady version of himself and Manny learns to let go as a parent and Pinocchio learns not to lie and Aladdin figures out he just has to be himself? You've heard all these lessons before. There is little to nothing new in this movie, nothing really that energetic or crazy creative. It is a straight up babysitting movie. It is here just to keep your kids entertained for a little bit and give you a break. I guess I can't say it's bad at that. I mean, there's really no moments where I was rolling my eyes and saying, oh, what a terrible joke or anything like that. The story's not insulting, the lines aren't insulting, but there's just nothing that really stands out about it either. The things that do work about it work okay at best. Like, the villain, I think kinda looks cool and has a cool voice. It's Peter Dinklage, they're pretty good at making him look and sound intimidating. But I feel like they could've made him a lot funnier. Wanda Sykes as the grandma surprisingly gets a lot of laughs. I really thought I was gonna get annoyed with this character, but her kind of elderly, not all there design and dialogue is pretty funny. The coyote rodent thing once again kinda steals the show. I really thought I would get tired of this thing by now, but I actually found myself more invested in his story than anyone else's, and it actually does have a really good payoff. Outside of that, there's really nothing much. I mean, like, I'm struggling to think of anything else to talk about with this movie. Um, oh, it it's kind of neat that this is the second cat since Scar, where if I was just to look at them, I could tell which celebrity was voicing him. Um, the animation's fine? Honestly, it kind of looks like more money was thrown at than there probably needed to be. Like, in the last one, it really was kind of big and grand and it was animated that way. This one, they're mostly just at sea, and I just feel like you don't need that much detail while you're out there, especially with these designs. I don't know, it's weird, because I talked about how simple and not very impressive the first film was in terms of how it looked, but this is the first one where I feel like they could have dialed it back. You just didn't need to see every hair on Manny for him just being out at sea, you know what I mean? It's a little weird to give the one song in the movie to the one guy who really can't sing, and he's got a singer in his crew. It's really bizarre they didn't give her a song. It just kind of exists. It doesn't annoy me, but it doesn't delight me either. I wouldn't watch it again. I probably wouldn't seek it out to watch it for a first time if I didn't have to for a job. It's hard to say it's even underwhelming because I didn't really get into these films to begin with. I guess after the third one, I was maybe expecting a little bit more like, well, if they're gonna make a fourth one, they're gonna like bring out something really unique, like, you know, justify its existence, but it really doesn't. It's just clearly a movie made to make money, but as a movie that's made to clearly just make money goes, there's been far worse, but there's also been far better. Yeah, sorry, I really don't have much on this one. It's Ice Age 4. Who has passionate thoughts about Ice Age 4? Not me. Um, goodbye.